Have you heard of the Rosetta Stone? It's one of the most precious artifacts of all time, the first clue to understanding ancient Egyptian scripts. It led to the discovery of at least three writing systems. This stone is as old as modern civilization, the Rosetta Stone. Then we have the Elgin Marbles, a set of Greek sculptures from the 5th century. They were built to decorate Parthenon, the temple of Athena. They're exquisite, just like the Benin bronzes. This is a collection of metal plaques. They once decorated the kingdom of Benin. The Benin bronzes are an African treasure. They show how skilled African artists were. Then comes the Tanjaur Shiva, another masterpiece. It's a bronze statue of Lord Shiva, the Hindu god, made almost a thousand years ago during the Chola dynasty. A testimony to the remarkable craftsmanship of the sculptors of ancient India. These are all stunning pieces of art. Do you know what's common between them? They're all present in the British Museum, or should I say the British Warehouse of Loot. These artifacts were either stolen or won by force or acquired unfairly. Today they serve as a cruel reminder of colonial times. But the British Museum displays them with pride. It presents them as prized treasures, showing no sense of remorse for the past crimes or gratitude for the people from whom these were taken. And why just Britain? Museums across Europe are filled with such objects, with uncomfortable histories linked to colonialism. So here's a question. Do they have the right to keep displaying these objects? Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. They say in law, a thief is not allowed to keep ill-gotten gains. No matter how long ago they were taken, they must be returned. No matter how much that thief may have improved them, they must be returned. European nations wrongfully took cultural riches. They took them from countries that are now independent states. But most of them refused to even discuss returning them. They refused to make reparations for their historical wrongs. According to the Archaeological Institute of America, 85 to 90 percent of classical artifacts in museums do not have a documented provenance, meaning they don't have a record of ownership or a record of origin through which museums can justify their right to possess these objects. Most of these artifacts are from Africa and Asia. In 2018, the French government commissioned a report. Guess what they found? Nearly 90% of Africa's cultural heritage is held by museums and institutions outside of Africa, nearly 90%. France alone has 90,000 such objects, stolen objects. A majority of them can be found at the Quai Branly Museum. It's a state-of-the-art museum situated in Paris. It holds a vast collection of art, indigenous art from the eight African colonies that France once ruled. Last month, French President Emmanuel Macron decided to make some amends. He made French museums bid adieu to a trove of treasures. At least 26 stolen artifacts taken from the kingdom of Benin were sent back. The works included palatial doors and royal thrones. They were all returned as a gesture of humility. Today's gesture is the possibility for the youth of Benin, the youth of Africa, to retrieve the works of their history and heritage, to be able to admire them at home. And I hope that this movement will continue and that the universal will be accessible in Cotonou as in Paris. And we will continue this work together. This move has had ramifications across Europe and the U.S. It has opened a debate on looted artifacts, a debate to send them back to their country of origin. A few museums have decided to do this. They've ceded ground. They've begun a process of restitution, but most of the mighty museums are playing ostrich. I'm talking about the big ones, like the British Museum in London, the Louvre in Paris, the Humboldt Forum in Berlin, the Getty Center in Los Angeles, the Metropolitan in New York. They're all playing dumb. These museums have locked up the precious legacy of a million people and they reject all demands to return any of it. They consider these artifacts as spoils of war, an argument that does not hold water, neither morally nor legally. International law does not allow it. You see, the concept of finders keepers does not apply anymore. There's a United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. It reaffirms the right of a country to reclaim its treasures. It obliges museums to return property that was taken without free, prior and fair consent. In fact, this has been recognized by courts. 
In England, Ireland and the US, courts have ruled in favor of returning wrongfully acquired artifacts. They've said that other countries have sovereignty over items which they think constitute keys to their heritage. And it's not just courts who back this call. Human rights treaties also support what they call the right to culture, the right to reclaim what belongs to your culture. Take India, for instance. It was colonized for two centuries by the United Kingdom, and this was colonialism in its most predatory form. The British looted everyone and everything. In today's value, this loot would amount to a sum of $45 trillion. This is according to research by Columbia University Press. It says Britain drained a total of $45 trillion from India. Shouldn't the UK pay reparations for this? Forget reparations. The least it can do is return India's stolen artifacts, like the Kohinoor, one of the most precious diamonds in the world. This diamond was mined at the Kulur mine in India. It was unfairly ceded to Queen Victoria when Britain annexed Punjab in 1849. Today, it adorns Queen Elizabeth's crown. Another priceless artifact is Maharaja Ranjit Singh's throne. It's covered with sheets of engraved gold. After the Anglo-Sikh war, it was moved to the Albert Museum. It's been in Britain ever since. Just like the sandstone idol of Lord Harihara from Madhya Pradesh. This 500 kg copper Buddha from Bihar. The sword of Tipu Sultan, they're all locked up at museums in Britain. What's the UK's excuse to keep them? Their argument is incredible. Most of the museums in Britain say their only aim is to make these objects available to all so that people from all over the world can come and see them, learn more about the roots and cultures they go from. They say they keep them for the rest of the world. Do you believe this? Do you buy this argument? It's like saying that some kid from Africa can always go to Britain to learn more about her culture. Why? Because Britain is the cultural capital of the world. Capital of colonial loot, more like. As for the public service they claim to do, here's what. People from all over the world can see African art in Africa too, and Indian art in India too. In fact, the whole concept of these museums is more like a colonialist fantasy of neatly cataloging the entire world in a single air-conditioned building so that Westerners do not have to cross continents to uncomfortable climates to see them. My point is quite simple. Artifacts belong to the countries of their origin, to places where they can best be appreciated, to people for whom they have the most meaning. So by holding on to them and displaying them for a fee, Western museums are still benefiting from their colonial legacy, still validating their historical wrongs and injustices. Their empires have crumbled, but their sense of entitlement has not.